a little bit of ASMR to start your day, right? So I'm boiling water in this kettle because I want to make some gelatin because I'm going to make a cold cake. You're watching the Bear Pantry Show. Specifically, this is called Kayo Cold Cake. Kayo is a city in Belize and somebody gave me this recipe years ago. And this is something that I take to summer potlucks all the time. So let's get right into how we make this dish. So we're gonna make the gelatin. So I'm pouring one and a half cups of boiling hot water and then I'm putting the mixture of gelatin and I'm using the Starburst brand instead of Jello brand. And we wanna mix this for two minutes solid, okay? We wanna make sure that all the powder is disintegrating and mixed into the hot water. This is the trick to making great gelatin. Then the two minutes is done, so we're gonna go ahead and add cold water this is per package instructions because we don't want to make like a mold or anything like that. We just want to make straight up gelatin. We don't want to keep it too long in the fridge either because the box says four hours. We want to put it in the fridge for two hours after we mix it up really well. All right, so stick it in the fridge and then let's move on to what else we need to do for this dish. We're going to use fruit cocktail and we want to go ahead and drain it, but we're not going to throw away the juice, the syrup. OK, we're going to need that. So set the fruit cocktail aside. This is media crema, which is between evaporated milk and heavy cream. And I'm gonna add condensed milk just because I want it sweet. Nobody said to add that, but I'm adding that, okay? So I had my baking pan in the freezer for about 30 minutes. And now we're gonna dip each cookie into the sweet syrup and put the cookies in the pan. I'm lucky when it comes to this pan because it's like a seven by 11. It's a brownie pan. I got it from Walmart years ago. So the cookies fit perfectly across and across. So the first layer is gonna be cookies. And then I'm gonna use a fork to just go ahead and break up my gelatin. And then put the gelatin on top of the cookies spread it out now if you hear me use the word gelatin and jello interchangeably is because jello is a brand all of it is gelatin but that's great marketing on behalf of jello right <laughs> so then put the cream put the fruit cocktail wet some more of the cookies and put another layer kind of like building a casserole right pretty simple guys no baking involved put the rest of the cream the rest of the fruit cocktail or the mixed fruits the rest of the gelatin and then no topping no no cookie topping all right just the gelatin for the topping put it in the fridge so that the gelatin can continue setting and then it's time to serve it well i've already served some of it for when my guests came to this party that i was having but just put this in like a styrofoam ice thing and take it with you to your potluck that you got invited to or if you're planning your own potluck you can keep it in the fridge until it's time to serve all right so what else could you make for your backyard celebration or what else could you take with you if you've been invited out to a potluck, right? You can take some spam sandwiches. Even if the people are not Belizean, this is gonna go over well. So first of all, you're gonna need one tin of spam. And you can use mayo, but I'm gonna use some Heinz salad dressing with some hot sauce. This is Marie Sharp's hot sauce. I'm gonna grate the onion for people who don't like the, the chunky onion in the stuff. Cut off the backs of your bread, and this is the bimbo white bread. This is the best bread that I like. I wish that they would come on as a sponsor to the show because I love this white bread. So then after that, grate the spam, or you could use a fork to mash it up, and I feel like a fork goes more quickly, and you get the same results as if you grate it, all right? So mash up your spam. Spam is very important to the people in Hawaii, right? Put it in a bowl. Put the onion and then put the salad dressing with the hot sauce. If you're, if you're using mayo, you might be able to get away with put a little bit of mustard, but just a tinge, all right? Mix it up real well like a spreadable thing. Then spread it on the bread. And then I'm gonna show you the different ways you can cut this up. I'm sure you guys already know this, but just in case, you know, for my Gen Zers that are watching, you know, this you can cut this different ways. So you can cut it this way and then you can cut it diagonally which is the old school way of cutting sandwiches right but if you're taking this to a backyard stuff people are going to grab two pieces and there's not going to be enough for anybody else so you may want to go ahead and cut it yet again into quarter right this way when it's diagonal and you can even cut it into quarter when it's the other rectangular way. Okay? Okay. 
See? Cute, right? Set it up on a nice platter, or you could put it on a throwaway thing, right? And put the shrink wrap over it and take it with you to the party. See? Beautiful. People are going to grab this, I promise you. So now the next thing that you can take with you to a backyard party, this is what I took to Sherry Shepard's backyard party when I was invited twice. I took my simple chocolate cake because that cake is to die for, all right? So it's a very simple recipe. You mix all the dry ingredients in one bowl. And although I used the strainer for the cocoa powder just now, I'm going to use it again for my batter. I don't usually show you guys that, but lately the flour in Costco has been really, really heavy and dense, so I have to sift all the stuff afterwards. So I'm mixing all the wet ingredients here, and I'm pouring the wet ingredients into the um, dry ingredients. Don't worry, I'm going to have the stuff listed below in the description for you. And I've already put the whole batter through a strainer into another bowl, and now I'm just pouring it into my greased and floured pans. And I also have parchment paper cut out for the bottom of the pans. And this only needs to go in the oven at 350 for about 30 minutes, okay? It's a very simple cake. It's so delicious and moisty. I'm ripping off the parchment right here. And I'm going to go grab my chocolate because we have to make the frosting. So this is that semi-sweet baker's chocolate. And we need six ounces. And one of these big plugs right here, or pips, they call them pips, right, is one ounce. So we need six pieces. And we're just going to melt this over a bowl of hot water. And it just uses some room temperature butter. Put the chocolate in, some vanilla extract, and the powdered sugar to make that. All right. So I'm also going to put a link up here somewhere so you guys can see exactly how to make this cake. Because I have several videos here at the page about this cake already. Okay. So frost in between the layers. Frost the top, the sides of the cake. And pretty much you can cut it into like 16 pieces that way. Or you could cut it that next way like that and get a bajillion pieces all right so for brata for extra which by the way guys i didn't tell you guys but right now i'm giving away my brata book the book that i was selling for one dollar i'm giving it away if you sub to the channel you can go ahead and download that book all right it's in the description somewhere down below you guys are gonna have fun with that book get it while you can because i'm gonna go ahead and put it back for sale in the very near future okay but go ahead and get your pdf for that little brata book so now for the brata i'm gonna go ahead and show you how to make the um pinwheels all right so get some cream cheese you can put some ranch powdered ranch dressing in the cream cheese or you could just spread it just like that get some big tortillas and we're gonna go ahead and make these pinwheel wraps i'm putting some chopped up uh spinach here because i'm trying to be healthy <laughs> And then some red, yellow, orange bell peppers that I've chopped up. And then I'm going to put just some cold cuts. Any cold cuts will do. And then what you go ahead and do is roll it tight in the aluminum foil, wrap it, and then put it on the fridge for a while to set before you cut through and, and make the slices, okay? So see, I've sliced this one already. And you can also make this cold mac salad. But what I'm going to do is put that up here somewhere so you guys can go find that recipe, okay? So I hope that this gave you a good set of things that you could take with you to your Labor Day potluck that you've been invited to. Or if you're hosting your own, or even if you're not having anything, you're going to want something to eat for Labor Day. Don't go buy food on the street. You can make this. Why? Because, like I always tell you, I'm Barbara. And if you're new to the channel, I want to teach you how to cook. That's my mission in life is to teach you how to cook because it'll change your wealth and your health. Your wealth because you're going to save money on all this stuff and your health because you get to put what you want to put in the stuff. Like I didn't put the ranch, the powder ranch dressing in the cream cheese to make the pinwheel wraps because that has MSG in it and that bothers me. So you can put that if you want to or leave that out if you want to. All right. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. And why am I wearing white? Because according to fashion, this is the last day that I can wear white for the season. After that, I'm just out of style. <laughs> Do you guys believe that stuff? Because I wear white anytime I want to wear white. All right. Anyways, guys, this has been a fun video to make. And I hope you guys like it. Go ahead and thumbs up the video for me. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. So I did a different opening to this video earlier and it was so funny because Joe was walking backwards while he was filming me and he had to like step, step like a cat because he had on shoes that when he dragged his feet you could hear it. It was so funny. <laughs> this is the Beth Andrew Show.